Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you guys. Uh, happy to be back on for another round of questions. So let's just get going. All right, first question comes from Nick Van Tracy. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Uh, here we go. Is there a process or an easy way to get better knowledge or a hold on my business expenses? I have a vehicle wrap business. I feel like everywhere I turn, I am paying money for X and X and never really make progress at actually understanding where I'm at financially. I just hired my first full-time contractor, not an employee yet. I feel like I'm all over the place when it comes to being financially responsible, always paying for whatever comes up and I'm sending, spending more than I am bringing in right now for revenue. It's a very fearful position to be in and I don't know how to break the cycle. I don't operate on a lot of cash, usually under 15K in my bank account. Okay, Nick. So um, one of the things that jumps to mind immediately is, um, do you have a budget of some kind? Do you actually know what you should be spending on a monthly basis? Are the things that you're buying, the X and the X, are these always surprises or are these things that um, you should be able to predict? Um, it's. I understand that you know when you're starting a business, you may have more expenses than you have revenue, so you're not profitable. That happens all the time. But you should be able to roughly um, predict, and, and it shouldn't be a surprise on a monthly basis. Like You should know exactly what your expenses are going to be. Um, one of the things that I um, like are uh, is zero balance budgeting. I would suggest um, that maybe if you wanna Google that, Google zero balance budgeting. Uh, it's basically the idea is that um, uh, you know all of your expenses on a monthly basis, you know all of your expenses that pop up on a quarterly, biannual, or annual basis, and those expenses are amortized into a monthly schedule. So even if you don't have to pay your insurance this month, because you only pay it every six months or every year, you, you're accounting for it. So that way when those, that would be one of those X's that then don't surprise you because you've already put it onto your budget and you actually accounted for it and you actually have the money in the bank waiting for you when you do have to pay for it. So um, I would suggest uh, zero balance budgeting if you're not already doing some sort of budgeting that you're happy with, um, that you would do that. And I should talk, um, we should do more of that. We should actually do a, maybe a, a group session on zero balance budgeting. I would like to do that for everybody. Um, next question. Bhushan Kalvani. I'm creating a software product. Should I wait for the product to complete or should I first check the interest in the market? The product is basically a web app which brings all your communications in one place. I also have other plans for tracking daily tasks and routine planning. How should I go about it? First get people's interest peaked or create a basic working product, then go to the market and, and invest in marketing. Um, one of the things that I found is that when um, I've started businesses before or built products or whatever, um, I do have a tendency or I have had a tendency in the past. I think I've, I don't want to say I'm cured of it, but I've become aware of it. Um, there's this, this tendency to build first and then swing the doors open and say, hey, everybody's welcome. And then nobody's there to be welcome, like that nobody cares, right? So um, my suggestion always, whether it's a product or it's a, a, a store or it's a service or whatever the heck it is, um, minimum viable product, meaning start talking about it, start quote unquote selling it with as little amount of time and money invested as possible before you, um, you know, jump all in on something. Because uh, I've seen many, many entrepreneurs spend lots and lots of money and lots and lots of time um, building something that is there's no market for, that they don't know who the market is. So then they spend the rest of their time trying to figure that out and they usually get discouraged and it doesn't work. So that would be my suggestion is to uh, identify your market first, talk to that market, know exactly what they want and build it right for them, get them involved in the conversation of building and designing so you're making something that they actually uh, need and want and that solves their problem. Marcantonio Sanfilu. What do you do every day actions that make you a better leader? 
San Juliano Concierge is your best host in Cartagena, Colombia for the perfect vacation or corporate retreat. We are a destination management company taking care of A to Z for successful individuals and groups. I want to do things that can help me better be a better leader. Please let me know any resources or ideas you have that I can do. Thanks. Um, that's a good question. What would be like a one good thing from a leadership perspective? Um, I would say figure out a way to practice leadership every day in some way, right? And I know that's kind of like a vague thing, but, um, and I, and what I mean by leadership, I think is, is that I guess you could, you, it, it depends on how you define it. When I define leadership, I think of it more as coaching versus like quote unquote leading, right? Like like leading a lot of times people mistake, I think for telling people what to do, um, which sometimes it is that, but I think in a, in a, in my preferred method is more of helping other people find their way to accomplish whatever their task or mission or goal is based on whatever it is that they do. So um, I have found that the more that I can give people that opportunity um, and I can kind of get help people see their own vision of how they're going to get there, that's leadership to me. So if I can practice that every day with my, with my kids, with my wife, with my friends, with people that I know just around town that I run into, um, I'm, uh, I'm always listening. So I guess actually that's probably one thing you could do every single day, uh, is listen more than you talk, ask more questions than you give answers. Um, these are all the types of things from a leader perspective that you can work on every single day. Uh, just changing your mindset from, a, um, yeah, changing your mindset to, to be focused on, uh, other people because that's the best way to lead. Marc Antonio Senfilou, again, how do you know if I should focus on just my business or get involved with new businesses or other projects? Um, I would ask the same question. Um, the question I would ask is, are you profitable and is your business working and are you happy with it, um, where it's at? Do you have time to focus on other projects without getting, without your current business suffering? Um, a lot, uh, yeah. I, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I, 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 we don't we want to we don't want the entrepreneurial shiny object problem, right? Where we kind of jump from thing to thing. We want to maintain some level of focus. Um, if your business is structured in such a way that it allows you to look at, at and do lots of different things, great. If your business isn't structured to really allow you to do that without suffering, then I would say uh, you need to work on your current business to get it into that position. Like that could be a goal. Some people don't want that as a goal. Some people are perfectly happy staying laser focused on their one business for 30 years and that's fine. But if you're the type of person who wants to like do lots of different things and have lots of different opportunities, um, you gotta make sure you're in a business and that that business is structured such that you can do those sorts of things and the business operates, you know, with that level of focus or lack of focus, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, Mark Antonio Sanfalu, is there anything you have read or listened to lately that you found useful as an entrepreneur that you think I can benefit from? Um, I always recommend uh, most of the stuff that I read and listen to is macroeconomic type stuff that's like current events sort of things. Um, I recommend that for everybody to kind of be aware of what's going on at the macro level because a lot of times we're so focused on what we're doing um, that we forget that there's a whole bigger world out there that could be affected, affecting what we're doing. And so understanding what's going on in the big world at the macro level um, can kind of give you a heads up on what might be happening in your market. So like, that's what I would probably suggest you do is focus on, um, like I, I think I've told people before, there's a great, there's a couple different things that I listen to. Economics Explained on YouTube is a great channel. Um, 
lots of good topical country level sort of stuff there. Um, RJ Talks is another one. The X-22 report is also good. Um, and of course, any of the big publications that you might normally think of, um, The Economist, you know, Financial Times, all that sort of stuff is all good. Um, so I would start, I would look at that macro level stuff and then I would look at your particular industry, stuff that really affects you specifically. If there's publications or things that are about your specific world, um, what's going on with those? Um, you know, what's going on in that world specifically? Yeah, that's probably what I would suggest. Rohit Gupta. How would you spend a business line of credit in the early stages of your business? I have an online a retail location, exotic snacks and drinks business. My brother got approved for a $10,000 business line of credit, which we're waiting for the deposit. I want to use it to grow my e-commerce side as it's lacking. What should I spend on to grow my business? Um, that I wouldn't spend it on anything until you know exactly what you should be spending it on. Um, there is this tendency to, to when people get money like that for an investment, uh, to be like, I'm going to buy digital ads and then I'm going to drive eyeballs and then people are going to buy stuff. That's good if that's true. Nine times out of 10, you don't actually know how to spend the money to actually drive sales or to, to drive growth. So, um, to avoid just burning through that cash and forgetting about it and like just losing it. Um, I'd be very slow about it and methodical about, okay, what for each dollar I spend, how do I know that I'm going to get $2 back? So you do have to answer that question before you start cranking through it. Now, sometimes you absolutely have to spend money in order to figure that out. And it is an experiment. And you just have to be prepared that you're going to lose the money like that it's going to burn. Um, that's why they call it a burn rate, right? Because you're burning money while you're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so I would be just very deliberate about that and, and have your expectations clear on what you want to get out of this investment. If you invest and you receive um, no money back, but you learn something, that's a perfectly fine investment, right? Like I spent $10,000 and I learned something. Just know exactly what you want to learn. So at least at the very least, you learned the thing. Um, really think ahead on, on why and how you're spending that money. Rohit Gupta, how do you get comfortable with confrontation? Um, I don't know. I guess it depends on what you mean by confrontation. Um, it's funny that you say that. I actually have a friend who's super, super successful. Um who is very, very not good at confrontation, like any type of confrontation, like what do you want for lunch is too much of a confrontation for him. Um, and he also has built a giant business. They probably have, if they don't have a thousand employees, it's close to it. It's a big business. Uh, he's got, and how he's dealt with confrontation or his, his lack of interest in it, uh, is he actually has a couple he actually has, you know, managers and people who are like his right and right hand type people. Um, and he's much more comfortable with confrontation via email and text. So um, for some reason, face to face, he can't say it, can't talk. And I kind of understand that. I, I guess I can relate to that to some degree. Um, but he can be very direct on email and text. And so he figured that out. So what he will do, and I've seen him do it. Um, he's been in, like if he's, he's in a meeting and he has, uh, you know, a bunch of people around and he's, they're trying to go through something. He's not happy with the way things are going. He really has to say, you're fired or like, this isn't working. Like we gotta, you have to go in a totally different direction. I don't like what you're saying. Like we're, it's, it's a very confrontational type interaction. Um, I've seen him get up from the table, leave the room and then send a text to one of his people in the room, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm thinking, da, 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 da. And then they'll report that back into the room to discuss, basically, till they make it happen. But he's not in the room at that point. Um, just the way he is, he's, he's a weird dude, but he's, he's, like I said, he's super successful and it works for him. So I, I think I, I admire him for that, that he is aware of how he operates and he's built a business and a, and a team 
around the fact that what works for him. Um, so it's the same for you. You have to decide what level of comfort you have with confrontation and then build a business and a structure and do things that allow you to um, to function and, and do what you need to do in, in those different things. I have other friends that are complete opposite of that. They'll, they're, they love confrontation. They'll look for any excuse to you know, argue with you about something and they'll argue about everything till the last, you know, end of the line. So, uh, yeah, just depends on your personality and then building a business that fits it. I and mean, I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb for anybody who's building a business. Um, all businesses are not created equal in terms of who, when you run them, you have to make sure that you're running a business that works for you and who you are and what you want out of it and how you want to operate. Um, it doesn't have to be all generic, you know, oh, I have this business and I will do the things that need to be done. No, pick a business that fits with what you do. You're more likely to be much more successful and or at the very least much happier in the process. Um, yeah. All right, that's it. Great to see everybody. We'll uh, talk to you again soon. Have a good one.